Okay everybody, today we're going to be seeing if super glue can work in a vacuum chamber. And this is interesting because if you know anything about super glue, you know that it needs a tiny bit of moisture in order to harden. Let me show you what I mean. So super glue is called a cyanoacrylate and its molecules look somewhat like this. And it doesn't just have one molecule, it has a lot of molecules. So you have these cyanoacrylate molecules all around each other, and an interesting thing happens when you add water. Normally you think of water as H2O, but actually water is usually split up to an H plus ion and an OH negative ion. So they're kind of split up. And this is the thing that reacts with the superglue. And so when you drop superglue in water, this reacts with an OH molecule, and suddenly it breaks this bond, and because it broke this bond, now this carbon reacts with this carbon and it breaks this bond and it still has a single bond here and a single bond here and then it reacts with this carbon and breaks this double bond and it just keeps going and reacts with another one and going 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 and it forms this long polymer chain that cross links and interacts and solidifies. And this long chain started to happen all because this little OH molecule reacted with the cyanoacrylate. So the reason that super glue can dry in air is because there's little droplets of water that can react with the super glue and it starts the chain reaction from the outside and it slowly hardens and forms chains all through it and solidifies the super glue. So if you have really moist air, it happens faster. And so that's why when you drop it in water, you see a quicker reaction than in air. So I have here some regular water from my tap. I'm just going to dye it a little bit blue so you can see it better just with some food coloring. Okay, so watch what happens when I put super glue in the water. So it kind of starts forming this film on the surface. And if I touch it, it kind of gets stringy. So, so it almost instantly forms kind of this gel-like structure. It's not all the way hardened and I can easily glue my fingers together if I let it stay there long enough. So if these OH ions are the things that catalyze this reaction, what would happen if we have a lot of OH ions? In fact, the King of Random actually did a pretty cool video on this recently where he put super glue mixed with baking soda in water and he showed that it forms this cool foam stuff and it reacts pretty quickly. But I wanted to take that a step further and show what happens when you mix super glue with potassium hydroxide. So you're gonna have a ton of these OH ions in the water. Okay, so I have here my same water, but let's see what happens when we add potassium hydroxide to it. Okay, so now this has a ton of hydroxide ions in it, those little OH negative groups that can attach to the cyanoacrylate and form these chain reactions. And because there's a ton more in there than just regular water, it should react really fast to the um, super glue, much faster than when you just use baking soda. Because baking soda is a weak base and this is a very strong base. Okay, so let's see how fast it reacts with the super glue. Three, two, one. <laughs> Whoa. It immediately just solidified. Look at that. That's so cool. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Three, two, one. <laughs> That's awesome. So you can see that the reason the super glue reacts at all is due to water and especially due to the hydroxide ions in water. So if you have it in a base, it goes super fast. Now we're gonna go the complete opposite direction and instead of having a ton of hydroxide ions in water, we're gonna have no water at all. So not have any hydroxide ions available to make the chain reaction with super glue. So let's see if super glue can even harden at all in a vacuum chamber. Okay, so I'm going to be attempting to glue two Legos together. But in order to do this in a complete vacuum, I'm gonna to have to get a little bit creative. So I'll put the Lego that I'm going to be gluing right here, and then I'll have another Lego that's attached to this magnet, and I'm going to move it down and try to attach it onto this Lego here. And for the super glue, I don't want it to be exposed to the air at all, and so I have to squeeze it out while it's already under vacuum. And so to do that, I'm gonna have the super glue tube laying here, and I'll have this large neodymium magnet on top of it. I'm gonna bring my other really big neodymium magnet below it, 
So I'll bring it up below it and it should squeeze the tube and squeeze out the super glue. And then I'll dip this white one in it and bring it over and see if I can glue it together. Okay, first let's get it under vacuum. Okay, we're at a full vacuum now. Now let's go ahead and squeeze out the super glue. Okay, here, oh, here comes my big magnet from below. Okay, there it goes. It's all just leaking onto it, but. Okay, now let's bring over our Lego. So it is now dipped in. We'll get both sides just to be sure. Okay, you can see that the you can see the Lego is now wet with super glue on top and bottom. Okay, now let's bring it over. That's pretty cool how it spins. See if it actually bonds. Okay, two Lego pieces. We know what happens when Lego pieces get super glued together. Let's see if it happens under a vacuum. It's been about five minutes now since we tried to bond them together. Let's see if they're actually stuck together now. Okay, let's try to move them. Hey, they're stuck together still. Huh. So it still does work in a vacuum. That's surprising. They're totally bonded. Huh. Okay, let's let the air back in and see how well they're bonded. Those are some really strong fumes when I let the air back in. <coughs> it's because all of the super glue had evaporated into the air, and then when I lit it back in, it immediately started reacting with the moisture in the air on the sides of the vacuum chamber. You can see that my vacuum chamber now is just cloudy. So this is due to the small amount of super glue that condensed on the side of the vacuum chamber. Yeah, so these are completely bonded together. So I was actually kind of surprised by this. I didn't think that the super glue would be able to bond in the vacuum chamber, but it looks like because you only need one molecule of the hydroxide ion to start the chain reaction, no matter what, even if you have a very good vacuum, you're still gonna have at least one molecule in there that can start the polymerization. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. If you haven't subscribed yet, remember to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And if you haven't headed over to theactionlab.com, head over there now to check out my new subscription box. This is a box where you can do your own experiments similar to the ones that you see me do on my channel. I provide all the materials for you and ship it out quarterly. So head over to theactionlab.com to check out that subscription box. And also if you go to theactionlab.com, you can get your very own Action Lab Glow in the Dark t-shirt, which is pretty cool. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.